today's video is all about stepping up our layered stencils. Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and I'm excited to share inspiration with you today featuring some new products from the Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber release. I know not everyone is into Halloween as I am, but I hope you still find value in this video. Before I jump into the project, I want to first share with you these storage pockets that I store my stencils in. These are from Simon Says Stamp. They're about six and three quarters square, and I use them for my stencils and my background stamps. So I love them. Now, this is the layered Halloween icons stencil. There's four pieces to this stencil, which is great for creating your own background and using multiple colors. The first thing I'm going to do is I have a piece of 80 pound white cardstock here cut a little bit larger than my stencil. And I lined up the bottom left hand corner of the stencil with the cardstock. That way, all of my stencils will be in the same position every time. I'm going to start this first layer by ink blending on Sunbeam ink with a blending brush. So this is a nice light yellow that I'm starting with as my first layer. And then after I remove this, you can see how it's going to start building up our scene. So this created some stars and some pieces to the candy and also a piece to the sucker. I'm going to bring in the second layer of the stencil, line that up with that bottom left hand corner. And now I'm going to bring in orchid. So great Halloween purple. Just adding that using my blending brush once again to all the areas of the stencil. I started with a light coat, but the more ink I applied, the darker it got. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the magnets from this to reveal this second part of the background. And then I'm bringing in the third layer, which has the pumpkins on it. So for this one, I used cantaloupe ink. Now for this one, there were some areas of the pumpkin that I blended a little heavier handed than the others. And it kind of gave it like a two tone look or an ombre look. And I really liked that. So I decided to step that up a little bit. This is the Mandarin ink. So this is a really, really dark, but bright orange that I'm applying to the bottom of each of the pumpkins with a smaller blending brush, just going about halfway up the pumpkin. I then I'm going to bring in my large blending blending brush that I was using and just go over those pumpkins to kind of help blend those two colors together. And then I'm going to bring in this very small detail blending brush and go over the center of the suckers just a little bit to kind of add some of that depth and dimension to these as well. This is where these small blending brushes come in really handy as I can get into those very small areas of the stencil. So after I did all that and removed this stencil, I was loving how this was looking and decided to go back and do this to the other layers that I already added. So I brought back in the purple layer. And for this one, I'm using kind of that uh, smaller ish or medium blending brush with iris ink, adding it to one side of the sucker and then these small detail ones to the middle of the sucker. So here I'm removing that looking fabulous. I'm very excited for it. So I continued on with the first layer I had done and added that with citrine ink. Now you may ask Mindy, do we really need all these blending brushes? And no, you don't. But ink blending is my number one thing that I do if you watch my channel. So I invest in blending brushes, all the different sizes, because like a painter would invest in multiple paint sets or uh, brushes. I blend. So I invest in blending brushes and I do find them super helpful. Now this last layer I'm doing in the intense black from Simon Says Stamp. And I do plan on adding a glitter glaze on top, but I wanted a base layer first. I really wanted to have that nice black underneath, especially when I'm putting it on top of the pumpkins. So after I did that, I kind of just wiped off a little bit of the excess ink. And now I'm going to use gunmetal glitter glaze from Brutus Monroe. Unfortunately, I could not find this um, on the Simon Says Stamp site, but there is one that's like a black that I think would look absolutely amazing. I'm not sure how much of a difference there really would be. So I think either one would work. So I scooped a little bit out and using my Hero Arts palette knife, I'm going to spread this all over that background that I left in place. Now with this glitter glaze, for one, it smells amazing. And two, it takes a while to dry. I think my background took about an hour, if not longer. But after I have a nice even coat, I'm going to carefully remove my stencil for this gorgeous Halloween glittered background. Now this, this is what makes my heart super happy. 
While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to do some die cutting with the Witch Please Word and Shadow die set. I'm going to start by taking that shadow layer and die cutting it from some black cardstock using my Hero Arts Compact Cutter. I love this thing because it can sit off on the side of my table and it's just so handy. I also die cut the words from some orange cardstock about two or three times. And then I had an idea to use some orange glitter cardstock to top everything off. I was a little worried that this would be too much glitter in the background, but once everything was done, I think it came out great. So I am going to layer all of these pieces together using my connect glue that I have in these fine tip glue bottles. I use my tweezers to kind of help pinch everything together, make it all make sure it's all perfectly lined up. And then I'm placing that on top of that shadow piece and setting some blocks on top of it to let that sit and really secure together. After my panel was completely dry, I trimmed it down to three and three quarters by five inches, along with three other pieces of heavyweight cardstock trimmed to that same size. And I'm layering them all together just to add some dimension and stability behind my panel. Then I can add this to a black piece of cardstock, which is going to tie in nicely with my shadow from my word die. Now I do have another version of this card over on my blog that I had created prior to this. And for this one, I switched up the colors. I think this one came out a lot better because I really like the black shadow and black card base that is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm adding that word die with some black foam squares to the center of my card, making sure that my margins are even on each side. So there we really have two ways that you can step up your layering stencils. You can add dimension with different shades of colors or and or you can add some glitter glaze over the top of one of your layers. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Even if you don't like making Halloween cards, I still hope you felt that this was a useful video. All the supplies will be listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy.